Hello everybody, so Shaziz here. I'm out here in my mad science laboratory. Um, this uh, video here is uh, basically to explain a uh, earth circuit that uh, I've been working on. See, the question was whether or not uh, you could actually get enough uh, working energy out of the dirt in order to actually do something. When I made my first uh, earth uh, with my ground rod, my copper coated ground rod, and my galvanized ground rod I was getting approximately 0.71 to 0.80 voltage out of it while it was under a load and so with that said it's not a whole lot of voltage not a lot of current or anything like that so the question was how do you get uh, how do you get enough uh, voltage out of an earth battery in order to be able to do something with it? Well, to understand electricity, uh, the, the easiest way to explain it, and this is probably going to catch me a lot of hell, but uh, let's go for it anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you, I got a glass of water here. All right, there's that little, little jar, mason jar. But if you see, if you can see that water inside there, you notice that it's perfectly level. All right. Well, nature has a way about balancing itself out, and so in order to understand electricity, you need to understand how nature works. No matter which way I tilt this right here, nature's going to balance it out. You know, I can turn it in any direction, and the level will remain the same. You know, you shake it up a little bit, it might take a second or two to finally balance out you see that little wobble in there but regardless of what nature will continuously balance itself out and so electricity works pretty much the same way um, you know you get the voltage on one side and a higher voltage on the other side and eventually nature is going to balance that out until you got one deal right there and that's one of the problems with the uh, alternative energy uh, uh, community out there can't figure out how to get extra energy out of that uh, particular circuit or whatever it is that they're working on. So with that said, um, what I've done is I've taken a uh, nickel hydride battery and I've in introduced it into the uh, earth battery circuit which is like I said a copper coated ground rod and a galvanized ground rod. These are eight foot long rods that I have pounded into the ground approximately about seven feet. And then I've got two sets of these. I've got two copper coated ground rods and two galvanized ground rods. And then I'm running them all in series into the uh, capacitor bank. But before the capacitor bank, before you actually get to the capacitor, I've taken two nickel hydride batteries and uh, put them in series with the entire circuit so that it creates an imbalance in nature. And so nature wants to take the energy from this battery to this battery and basically as it's going through the circuit balance it out just like the water itself. See, the basic understanding of electricity, if you think about it in the lines of plumbing, if you got a pipe this big this big right here then you can get a large volume of water down through there but you don't have a lot of pressure so if you reduce that down there you're going to uh, basically get uh, from the large volume try to force that water down in through the uh, smaller pipe and increase, increase the pressure the same thing with a uh, circuit board you know circuit board uh, you're sitting there controlling how much current goes through via resistors and transistors a transistor will be like a switch and until the voltage gets to a certain height it won't do anything and then when it gets high enough it'll allow the current to finish flowing through that circuit and on into the next uh, deal so basically uh, the way a circuit board works is by regulating valves on a water deal you know you got a large valve or whatever and when you turn it on if you just crack it open a little bit then you get a little bit of water out that and if it's under pressure on this side you'll get a big spray out of that until you finally open the thing completely up see Nikola Tesla was he used to mess around with a knife switch and he'd keep throwing that switch and try to figure out why it is that whenever he uh, flip that switch on real fast you get a sudden spike and then everything would smooth out again 
So that's one of the things that uh, helped him in his work as far as building the Tesla coil and many other designs that he worked with. But I know some of you probably had this happen before. When you go to your uh, light switch to turn your light on, you flip it on real fast and suddenly the bulb blows out. That's because behind that uh, switch, even though the uh, circuit's open, it hasn't, the switch hasn't been closed yet, then there's still current electricity building up behind there. There's pressure building up. And as soon as you flip that switch, that pressure releases really fast into that tungsten element in the light bulb and then blows your, your, your light bulb out and you got to replace it. So with that said, let's get into this deal over here. Um, keep in mind, I got a whole mess going on here, and a lot of this doesn't even have, it doesn't even pertain to this video. I'm just uh, running out of space in my lab room. I've got uh, essentially two nickel hydride batteries. I don't know if you can see that or if it's even upside down. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, I got two 9 volt nickel hydride batteries, and I have uh, essentially run these in series with the uh, earth circuit outside, with the ground rods outside. So um, I'll send the diagram in the video, and if that don't work out, I'll, I'll at least I'll probably do both. I'll probably put a link underneath the video so you can see. But you notice right here, I got 7.44 volts of electricity. This is being stored into this capacitor bank. So as it's coming from the earth, it's coming up in through one battery, going into the positive side, coming out the, uh, uh, the negative side, going into the uh, opposite side on this battery right here and back down into the earth so the completed circuit is there. So if I unhook this one right here, you'll notice that the voltage pretty much stays the same. The circuit's broken right now. There's no switch on it. So that's all all that energy is stored into this capacitor. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh I'll go ahead and take this off right here for a second and lay these down here. And I'm gonna hook a voltmeter up there so that you can see how many volts is actually in that battery. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, I've got my positive and my negative. Doo -doo -doo. All right, hopefully you can see that. Let me see right there. 5.67 volts of electricity is actually in that battery right there. So <coughs> that battery is not fully charged. And the uh, battery on the opposite side is probably even less than that. I tried to do the best I could to drain them down to complete zero and let them charge back up. So with that said, these uh, batteries aren't fully uh, charged. And so I'm going to hook this back to my deal. You'll notice probably a little drop in the voltage there for a second when it all gets started. Huh, going to make a liar out of me, ain't you? Alrighty then. Well... Anyway, all this uh, other stuff over here is just the load that I normally had it uh, attached to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect the negative side on this. And you'll watch the battery, or the voltage on that deal, change out. It'll start going down. And you'll see it actually running the uh, load itself. So got a little bit of beeping going on and that kind of stuff you notice that the voltage is dropping down once I uh, disconnect it you'll see the voltage starts raising back up <coughs> there it goes back up and so the concept is if you take uh, either a transistor or a, uh, a uh, relay switch 9 volt relay switch when this uh, capacitor gets to its full uh, capacity as far as the 9 volts that I'm running right here then it will kick the relay and allow the energy to go into the load and once the uh, energy is dispersed from that then it the relay will shut off and then it will go right back to charging again now keep in mind you know by itself it's not really that impressive and it won't do uh, a whole lot because you don't you can see how fast that uh, energy is actually dropping down but if you had duplicate systems side by side with it 
and each time one of them would get to full charge then it would kick either a relay or a transistor and send that energy into the load and then the next one would kick over and then the next one and so on down the line and you have these actually running back and forth when one's being used the next one's charging and there's one in line all the way down through the whole deal so you can you can see that you can actually get working uh, voltage out of just the dirt alone I've disconnected it. You still hear a little bit of a wee in the background from that uh, piezoelectric crystal because there's uh, capacitors in here and so some of that energy gets stored in there. So essentially what's going on, to put it simple, is just like this water right here, there's energy in one of the batteries and nature is trying to balance it out. And so as, the, uh, as nature is uh, doing what nature does, I'm capturing energy into the capacitor. This capacitor and that capacitor are hooked in parallel and then it's running down here to my load right off here to the side here which is this little circuit board that you see in right here and you notice that get a little bit of blinking going on. Let me see if I can make you dizzy and drag you over the top here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay disconnect it. Got our voltage. We'll let it charge up there. Get it about three or four volts. See, it's rising pretty good. Hit it again. And hopefully you can see them lights coming to life there. There's actually more over here, but uh, either way you get the point. And if I let this charge up enough here, I don't know if you can, you'll be able to see this, but uh, this is just a little four volt, a uh, little electric motor. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this. Get a charge up about four volts. It's only going to move for a second. Just moved. You gotta watch real close. See that wheel turn. All right, let it charge back up. See, it drains it down pretty fast that way. So there's going to be some tweaking to the whole deal. You'll have to work on it, but uh, <clears throat> either way you can see that it is actually charging that up and if I leave it there long enough you'll you'll see that these uh, uh, batteries uh, voltage right here will go all the way up the highest I've had it so far was just slightly under 9 volts and I had to leave it running quite a long time before it would actually get going let me see if I can get this wheel to kick again yep it kicked for a second but it took it down pretty fast Anyway, so uh, you're actually getting some work out of uh, out of the dirt. Now, with this other system over here, I don't have to uh, I don't have to get the voltage up as high. If I left that running long enough, I could actually get that little motor to spin really good. But you know, we was only working on slightly less than four volts there. But you can see the current is actually there. Now I can't find the wire. All right, we're coming back up to about. 3.9567 8 All right, there's 4 volts. So, this here normally runs off about 9 to 12 volts, but you can see that it's actually uh, it's actually running it. All right, well, I'll leave a link to the uh, to the uh, picture just in case because I did this video and for some reason when I put the damn uh, picture in the video it screwed up the video and it didn't uh, didn't take like it was supposed to so I'll, what I'll do is redo that whole section there and uh, just in case put a link down there so you can download the uh, the diagram of the circuit that I'm talking about and so there you go you can actually get some working energy out of dirt if you use a little bit of ingenuity with some transistors or some uh, some relay switches you can have several banks of these 
working their way up and when one bank gets charged it'll charge the next one and actually they'll all be charging at the same time but whenever you whenever you flip the uh, relay or the uh, transistor then that one's basically obviously going to drain down and then the next one and then the next one and so on and by the time you get back around here and start the whole process over again so it's uh, actual working uh, voltage current out of uh, out of the dirt <laughs> so anyway I'll probably get some hate mail over this one, but that's all right. Peace and love, everybody. Take care. So Shaziz signing out.